Elam hits theaters May 17th and promises to take viewers even deeper into the world of assassins and their various vendettas. Here's what you should watch before you head to the theater. There's a lot of great dialogue in the first John Wick film, but we all know which one is the true money line. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. It's as much a statement about the character of John Wick as it is a battle cry for Keanu Reeves, the actor. Reeves had a string of hits in the 90s, including a little movie you might have heard of called The Matrix. But then came the sequels. After their mixed reception, it seemed like Keanu's star was finally descending. He continued to work on smaller films and passion projects, but he didn't truly rise to prominence again until 2014, when he donned a suit and dug up a lockbox full of guns and gold coins in John Wick. Reeves was back in the spotlight with plenty of momentum, and will even be returning to his first iconic role in the long-awaited Bill and Ted Face the Music, alongside Alex Winter. Yes, we're thinking he's back. The first entry in the John Wick franchise is incredibly straightforward. For those who haven't seen it, spoiler alert! A man named John Wick, who has recently lost his wife, learns that she had adopted a puppy for him. He takes the puppy in and loves it with all of his heart for a single day. But after a chance run-in with the dirtbag son of a mob boss, things go wrong. That dirtbag son decides he wants John's car, so he goes and takes it. And in the process, he kills John's dog. This is a big mistake. May I ask why? Yeah, well, because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. Turns out, John is a retired assassin who was so good at his job that he's essentially the boogeyman for other hired killers. And he's mad enough about his dead doggy to get back in the game and destroy everything in his path until he gets his revenge. It's a simple story, but it's told incredibly well. Smash cut to John Wick Chapter 2, and we learn a lot more about the secretive world of assassins. This globetrotting adventure introduces a high council of assassins and criminal masterminds, some of whom have unfinished business with John Wick himself. Enter Santino D'Antonio, who has a favor to call in. Sei qui per il Santo Padre? No. The job is simple. Kill D'Antonio's sister, Gianna, so that he can take her seat at the table of the High Council. John goes through with it and immediately becomes entangled in a conspiracy that leads to D'Antonio placing a massive contract on John's head to cover his tracks. The hunt for John Wick escalates to the point where John is forced to kill someone on the grounds of the Continental, which is a big no-no. By the end of Chapter 2, Wick is on the run with a one-hour head start to outrun every assassin in the world leading to the events of Chapter 3. As much as we love the specially minted gold coins used by the killers in John Wick's world, there's another currency that's just as important — blood markers. They're one of the few things that rein in even the most brutal and relentless of hired killers, and a blood marker is only earned when another assassin does someone an immense favor. They can then claim that marker at any time to call in any favor in return. It cannot be refused. It's taken as seriously as spilling blood within the halls of the Continental. Rules. Exactly. Rules. The reason John had to take the job to kill a member of the High Table was a marker held by Santino D'Antonio, one that he earned by helping John get out of the assassin's life and go live his fairy tale existence with his wife in peace before the events of the first film. By the end of Chapter 2, as John Wick goes to take his head start in escaping with an open contract for $14 million on his head, Winston gives him a blood marker which may act as his only lifeline now that he's been made excommunicado from the League of Assassins. In the first two John Wick films, we've already seen an incredible roster of over-the-top characters populating the shadowy, stylish underworld where anyone could be an assassin just waiting for the right moment to strike. That doesn't seem likely to change as we get into Chapter 3, with both returning characters and some brand new faces. Ian McShane will be back as Winston, the manager of the Continental, and Kiana's Matrix co-star Lawrence Fishburne will be returning as the mysterious Bowery King, a seemingly homeless man with a deep knowledge of the world of assassins and a love of pigeons. Seven million dollars! Damn! It's Christmas. We're going to Applebee's after this. Here's hoping that the minds behind the John Wick franchise can find a place for Carrie Ann Moss, if she's interested, completing the <clears throat> trinity. Seeing the three stars of The Matrix reunited on screen even for a short time would be pretty awesome. 
As for the new characters, Parabellum has upped the ante with an impressive roster of stars. Holly Berry will appear as Sophia, a former accomplice of John's who wields two pistols and two dogs, while Angelica Houston joins up as the severe, calculating director. Mark Dacascos will play the nefarious Zero, while comedy favorite Jason Manzukis will play the oddly named and undoubtedly weird TikTok man. Keanu Reeves has been a lifelong fan and practitioner of martial arts, but few roles have been as demanding of him as John Wick. Reeves went all in and spent three months at a John Wick boot camp to work on firearms training, fight choreography, and driving like a maniac. Some of the training involved Reeves working on his drawing, holstering, and even search and seizure techniques. This helped him and the stunt team come up with a unique style of movement and gunplay. No one moves quite like John Wick. Reeves is also heavily involved in the stunts. It will be a wild ride to see how the stunt team and stuntmen turned filmmakers Chad Stileski and David Leach up the ante for Chapter 3 as John Wick's world only continues to get wilder and more dangerous. One of the best things about the secretive world of assassins and gigantic Super Mario gold coins that's presented in the John Wick movies is that there's just enough to let us know that there's plenty we haven't seen. Those looking for a slightly expanded version of that world, however, may have something to look forward to. There is currently a spin-off television show in the works at Stars, Called The Continental, it will showcase a new kind of adventure in the world of John Wick, focusing on a brand new character who's pulled into the world as the story unfolds. Stars has its eyes on making a television show that captures the slick ferocity of the John Wick films and has tapped the original co-directors and producers Chad Stileski and David Leach as well as original writer Derek Kolstad and, of course, executive producer Keanu Reeves. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite obsessions are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.